about a 12-hour boat ride from the main island of Santa Cruz out to Pinta. And on the way out, we had very uh, choppy seas, uh, leaving more than a few people a little seasick. <laughs> but it is kind of an exciting boat ride because you get to see a lot of the um, sea life that you wouldn't normally see. We were very lucky to have the Galapagos National Parks collaboration all of this, so they provided all the transportation and logistics work and getting us out to the islands. We had many people helping us um, get all of our equipment together and uh, getting it out to the island, and we had a lot of equipment. <laughs> For Elizabeth Hunter, it was her second trip to Pinta Island. In 2010, she helped bring these tortoises to the island so researchers can determine whether reintroduction of the tortoises can restore balance to the ecosystem as they feed on grasses during the rainy season and on cactus in the dry season. This is our camp. We had a communal area under that tarp where we did all of our cooking um, and kept all of our food. You can see our very plush uh, cooking arrangement there. We had a gas stove and did all of our cooking there. Um, kept our food in these containers. So Pinta is one of the newer islands of the Galapagos Archipelago. It's less than a million years old. so. Um, about a third of the island is bare lava, and the rest of the island is vegetated, but you can see some of the areas where the lava is being colonized by new vegetation. The island is actually made up of um, two volcanic peaks. To the west of the island is the older volcano that has mostly been uh, subsumed into the ocean, and the main peak of the island um, is much more recent. This is the view from these cliffs, just a spectacular view. Um, actually, I think I said 400 feet, but it's actually about 400 meters high in an elevation above the sea level there. Um, so just another example of how spectacular it is to be able to be on this island and see places that most people will never get to see. One of the joys of living on the beach was that you got to share the beach with a pretty large a colony of sea lions. Um, so they were fun to watch, um, especially when they're swimming. So this was fun up to a point until the large males would get angry at you and often charge you and chase you along the beach. So you had to kind of watch out for them, especially if you needed to do any bathing in the ocean. You had to keep your eye on those big males. One of the things that we wanted to do this year in field work was to um, look at changes in vegetation history through time by looking at the record of the plant community in the soil. So we had to create these soil pits in order to get um, profiles of the um, carbon deposited by various plant communities in the soil. We were mapping locations of cactus all throughout the island. The cactus, those arboreal cactus, are the main food item for the tortoises. So we're trying to figure out um, where the cactus population is the densest um, in order to predict where the best locations for future introductions of tortoises will be. We would have to um, bushwhack most of our way across the island. We had two main trails, but most of the time we were off trail and cutting our way through dense vegetation using machetes. So a lot of these, the parts of this island haven't been seen by people very often. Here we're in the far northeastern or northwestern corner of the island um, where nobody has been for uh, probably a couple of decades. And it has really um, become quite overgrown it's very difficult to travel through, and none of the tortoises have made it over to this area. It's very dense. One of the reasons that um, tortoises were being reintroduced to the island was to restore processes of seed dispersal, but here we, the humans, are being the main seed dispersers on the island. <laughs> Giant tortoises on Pinta are thought to have numbered between 5,000 and 10,000 before pirates and whalers began removing them for food. So I think this is when we first found Wilman by our camp. This is after we had been on Pinta for about a week and he was right next to my tent 
and I was just so happy to see him because uh, we hadn't been able to get a signal on him and there he was right next to our camp and he hung around our camp for many weeks and would walk along on the trails that we had made for ourselves and sleep under our our tarp to, in the middle of the day to find shade hang out by our water canisters probably hoping that he could get some of that water he was very curious um, very lovable he would sometimes make beds right next to our tents at night it was great to have him around and, and be able to um, see a tortoise even when we weren't doing field work the last known pinta tortoise, named Lonesome George, was removed from the island in 1972 as researchers looked for a suitable mate to try to restore that population. But so far, those efforts have been unsuccessful. All of the tortoises were sterilized, so they're no longer reproductive. Um, this was done because most of these tortoises are hybrids and the Galapagos National Park doesn't want them to reproduce with any future um, pure reproductive populations. Um, however, the males still had all the normal hormones that tortoises have, so we would see them um, making mating attempts, although they would never be fruitful. <laughs> so this is really the action that um, creates the disturbance um, that will hopefully restore some of the balance in the plant community. So this is another shot of one of these areas where um, a couple of the large tortoises spent a couple of weeks and really um, knocked back all the vegetation in this area and left bare soil, which will really impact what plants are able to regenerate there. And this is the kind of disturbance that we're hoping to see the tortoises create through time. This was the boat ride as we were leaving Pinta after we had spent a little over two months on the island. Um, I know I was quite sad to be leaving. I know a couple of the other assistants were very sad as well. So we kind of watched Pinta fade away into the distance. It took a, a couple of hours for it to finally disappear into the distance. <laughs>